Good evening, wrestling fans from the world-famous AWL Arena in Tokyo, Japan. This is AWL Hontai, episode 379. We are starting off, as we did back in Canada, with Joshi Atomicos action. The following Atomicos match is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, making her work the ring on the island of Mosquito. She is the reigning animated wrestling league. Joshi Champion, Athena Shay. For at least another week. Have you ever known a wrestler who's been punished by getting booked more? Because <laughs> that's the situation Athena Jane finds her in after pissing off the AWL Commissioner by violating the rules of the brand extension. She not only has to face a clear the board match, but she's been wrestling on, I think, every show ever since. Just trying to exhaust her. And now we complete the golden triangle of the Joshi Division. And her partners, introducing first making their way to the ring from Transylvania and the realm of the Yokai. They are the reigning animated wrestling league, Joshi Tag Team Champions, Nekobusume, and World Japan, Monster Union! Monster Union presents the Unholy Alliance. Cats and dogs wrestling together. It's mass hysteria, ladies and gentlemen. I gotta get that joke out every time, I know. At our season finale, AWL 38020, if you will, we will have worlds colliding as Monster Union faces the final Campeonas de Parejas. The Bird and the Bee, Willow Nightingale solo darling, with the Joshi Tag Team Championship of the Animated Wrestling League on the line. As we see the cat girl, the cat daughter, Nekomusune stalking her prey, marking her ter- oh, okay, uh, no, not marking her territory, technically, but proclaiming to the heavens, proclaiming to all the wrestling fans around the world. That great phrase, Viva Monstai Union! I gotta feel, I gotta find something to say during that entrance. And now we have a very interesting dynamic. And a better partner making her way to the ring from Tokyo, Japan. The Mistress of a Thousand Holes. And a challenger to the Joshi Championship, Akira Mariner! You heard that right, challenger and champion on the same Atomicos team. Mainly because none of the Technicos wanted to work with Akira Mariner. Nobody likes her. As we await the opposition, the noble opposition, we're starting with everybody's favorite pink bunny girl. Except for that one enemy I probably haven't and seen. Their opponents, introducing first being your word of the ring from the war end. She is a challenger to the AWL Joshi Championship. Boosacha! Yeah, at this point there really is no point in saying a yeah, rank in the Joshi division because of the Joshi singles division because we're going to be clearing the board. It's going to be four challengers, one champion, five wrestlers, four falls to a finish at the finale, and we will have a Joshi, an undisputed Joshi champion, and I do not think it's going to be Athena Jane. And her partner, Now, this is not the first time we've seen this team of Usachan and Betty Bubbles in AWL action this season. They have a 0-1 tag team record. Of course, that does not apply to eight woman tag matches. But they are apparently collectively known as the Battle Bells. Bell, of course, meaning beauty in French. The Battle Bells. Yet to find a win in tag team action. But hey, tonight can be the night because they've got some veteran assistance. That's right. The greatest tag team in the Joshi Division's history. And their partners, making their from the human 
Psyche, the original tag team, Yin and Yang. Season Zero Originals, the first AWL World's Tag Team Champions, back when we were allowed to do intergender wrestling. And right now, they are willingly, happily teaming up with the Battle Bells to find a weakness in the current Joshi Champions. And we get to see some of the best female wrestlers in the world ply their trade inside the AWL 20 by 20 foot ring. It'll be a 15 minute time limit, one fall to a finish, and it's Champion and Challenger starting us off, and there's the Bunny Kanrana, and did you see the leap? Did you see the jump? Did you see the vertical ability of, and the, again, oh, going for it again, but no, sit out powerbomb counter. Never underestimate the leaping ability or the leg strength of a rabbit wrestler. We've had a couple of them here in the AWL. Always incredible power in the legs and always get underestimated. Taking a look at some of the win-loss records involved here. Athena Jane, 28 and 30 in her AWL career. Usa Chan, who's been in the AWL about as long as the reigning champion. 22 and 22 in perfect balance as all things should be. Backdrop driver by the champion. And Monde Amazon making a tag to Nekamusume. Nekamusume, the cat daughter, now legal. And Nekamusume, of course, a member of AWL Strong and Free. But as Joshi Tag Team Champion, she is allowed to float between the brands. The singles and tag titles of both divisions have that privilege. Nekamusume currently at 25-24, ratio of plus one in her AWL career. Fierce competition in the Joshi division. Very few wrestlers have a massive win-loss ratio advantage. However, one of them in this match, and that is, of course, Akira Merune. Irish whip across the corner into the enemy corner for Nekamusume. And what is this going to be? This does not look good. Irish whip. Boom! Big lariat. I don't know what that was supposed to be. Wait a minute. Hisatsuaza. Bunny hop! Bunny hop! Bunny hop! Who's the with the bunny hop? Oh, God. Okay, please. We got to ban this. All right. It's going to be Yin from the light side of the human psyche. Betty Bubbles of the Battle Bells with the bunny girl. Athena Jane not going to be doing anything to help. Nekamusume, the tag team champion who has already suffered a loss this week. I believe she was the one who lost to Solo Darling, but the referee not making the count after the illegal triple team. But the damage done to Neko Musume, rabbit versus cat, no one bet on the cat. Then comes the dog. All right, senior official Joey Bobby Ganusha, the famous Bobby Ganusha wrestling family, has lost control of this match, ladies and gentlemen. One in, three out. It looks like there was a tag to Yang from the dark side of the human psyche. More the powerhouse of the, du of the duo. Drop kick, gonna go for maybe the Uriken. Eventually gonna build up to the duality driver. What we have here about back elbows, trying to escape being brought into the opposing corner. About three minutes into the match now. As, uh -oh, what is it? Alley oop! Boom! Cats do not always land on their feet, especially when they're thrown. That's terrible advice. Never use it in anything. Oh, Uriken! The spinning back fist. Literally, the, the backwards fist or the under fist, you might call that. The opposite fist. And into a... Oh, yeah, but the arm literally over the bottom rope. Immediate rope break. Coming up a little later tonight, we've got something you almost never see in the AWL. We've got a handicap match. Two on three. It's going to be Kyojin Kobayashi and Hifumi Ryuji teaming up once again. And they will face Satoshi Tobu and Zaidan J. Money exchanged on that match, I have no doubt. And in regular tag team action, we've got Dangerous Techers from New Japan Pro Wrestling versus Yokai Butai, still steamed from the first loss of their faction. Of course, the grand championship match where Wyvern lost to. Project Tetsu 3.0, who will be defending his title yet again at the finale in a last man standing match against The Rock. T-H-E-R-O-C. And we got a couple of stomps here, and 
The referee, the referee might have to disqualify. Wait a minute. Opportunity here. Submission opportunity. Yeah, there's a tap out. Nekamusume tapping ahead of the finale. Hopefully trying to save herself for the Tag Team Championship defense against Bird and B. Bird and the B. A little bit later. Let's take a look at some of that action. Here we go. Duality driver. That probably should have been the finish. But it wasn't. It had to be the figure four headlock. A rare to get a victory off of that maneuver. But you can there very clearly see the tap there. A win to the Technicos. Here are your winners. Usacha, Petty Bubbles, Gin, and Gang! Moving over now to the men's division, Yokai Butai looking to rebound in their from their first faction loss. As the theme music of the great Tanuki plays throughout the AWL arena, Utramantis Black backing up his man. The following tag team contest is scheduled for one fall. Already in the ring, representing Shinhon Kurabasu. And their opponents, accompanied by Ultra Mantis Black. The tag team combination of the great Tanuki and Shuke Kitsune. Together they are Yokai Butai. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, the great Tanuki at 4 and 3 in his AWL career. Shuke Kitsune 3 and 1. As a tag team, they're officially two and two, but that incorporates uh, losses from before the formation of the Yokai Butai faction. And it's gonna be Zack Sabre Jr. versus the Great Tanuki to start us off. Bang a gong, we are on 15 minutes on the clock in a tag team match, non-title of course, because there are no belts involved. Body slam, scooping body slam to Zack Sabre Jr. Now Zack Sabre Jr. is not a powerhouse wrestler. He's not gonna pick you up and slam you but he is going to tie you in absolute knots. The great Tanuki realizes that running leg drop, running sliding leg drop, can do it again. No, this time with the, this time with the tail, this time the reverse. And that is the, uh, the sneaky style of uh, the great Tanuki. And, Sa and Saber immediately trying to wrestle his match, grabs the wrist, the power of wrist control, one of the ultimate techniques of the martial arts, especially if you're a loser. But going into, there's the joint manipulation. He's got the wrist, he's got the arm, he's got everything right. Oh, and he stomps and rolls away with some style, just with some, some polish on it, just to end with a bit of an exclamation point. He's not gonna, you're not gonna submit someone this early with a wrist lock, but you are gonna prove to them that you can control them. You are in charge here. And the great Tanuki knows better than to allow that to happen. A tag made and Yokai Butai see what they've got together. Boom, big axe handle, that's smart. Try to work over an arm. Try to take away an arm, you take away the grip. Take away the grip and you take away pretty much the entire offense of the Submission Master. Irish Whip back into the corner. And of course we've got Zach Mephisto as the tag team finishing maneuver on the side of Dangerous Techers. Uh, thankfully for the ringside crew, uh, no sign of the king of professional wrestling. This is a coming order tonight. I'm quite grateful for that. Uh, no, no disrespect intended, of course. None. none he scares me. Uh, about two minutes in now, kick away from Zack Sabre Jr. So far it's been a corner-to-corner -corner contest here, with both teams trying to hit their tag team Isatsuwazas, and I think we've got something open. Oh, standard drop to hold elbow drop. And that's something I don't think we've seen from uh, Yokai Butai as an actual tag team finishing maneuver. I don't think they've actually got one. I don't think they've been together as a team long enough to develop that. Hopefully that's something during the upcoming offseason they'll be able to do Round and round the forest, the mysterious forest of Shiginomori goes the king of the tribe. Tag is made, in comes the holy emperor, Taichi, into it. Ooh. And he gets dropped with a, D almost a guillotine DDT, we might want to call that, because it goes almost for a guillotine choke, and just falls back into the uh, double danger tandem. Uh, the Damien's dinner time, sorry about that, the Damien's dinner time. Kick to the, uh, the thigh, to the kick to the quadricep, going for a powerbomb perhaps, yes he is, sit out powerbomb, almost Ligresque, one, actually almost shades of uh, Kode Bushi, if and when he's ever going to come back, that might be an issue between them. 
tag is made. We're back to Zach. Did not mean that to rhyme, but it does. And into a lateral, but no, he's going for the Juji Gatame. He's going to go for hold 20. Yes, Ni Juji Gatame. Zack Sabre Jr. going to try to hyperextend the groin. That is actually, it's not technically a low blow, but it is an attack to the groin muscles. So, you know, credit for originality on that one. Or credit for or creativity, I should say. Tag made. And what do we have here? Double, oh, this is not going to be good. Oh, double arm bringer. Off of the ropes. Oh, vivisecting kicks by the duo of dangerous tech. I'm finally at the point I can almost say that name without laughing. 11 minutes. Uh-oh, this is not good. Tai Chi looking for something big. He's looking for the big kick. Shades of Tajiri. And boom! Right to the head. No, he blocked it! He got the arms up. He got the front paws up. The great Tanuki blocking it, but not the Ibushi bomb. One. Kick out yet again. You're not Kota Ibushi, and you probably never will be. We have about ten and a half minutes remaining in the 15-minute time limit. Plenty of time. We still have our big handicap main event coming up a little later tonight, ladies and gentlemen. It's the. It's going to be Hifumi Ryuji, Kojin Kobayashi, Zaidan J, and Satoshi Tobu. So again, we have the champion and challenger on opposite sides of the tag team. Match because it's the go home show, of course. We do. Go for the go for the five minutes, five minutes past. Drop down by oh, going for there's the Tanuki's claw. The Tanuki claw, he is down, he is out. There's gonna have to be a rescue here. No, 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 wait a minute. The Holy Emperor with holy power powering his way out of this. Can you miss such a DDT? Additional DDT, no guillotine this time. The great Tanuki proving that he is versatile in the basics. Duck under the clothesline, snap kick right to the face. What do we have here? Oh, drop down. Oh, I love when he does this. The amazing flexibility. The flexibility, the agility, literally inhuman from the Tanuki spirit. As the white, as the white furred fox comes in to break things up, get things back to some sort of, some sort of. Ki oh, we're back to the claw. We're back to the claw. If at first you don't succeed, claw, claw again. Keep clawing, keep scratching. You'll keep pick out that victory eventually. And we have seen the great Tanuki win matches with this claw hold. Slightly different in style, slightly different in application than the classic claw. The classic claw is really more of a grip to the temple, whereas the Tanuki claw a lot more just sort of clawing at the face. And Shirokei Kitsune with a quick tag. And of course you have Utramantis Black there giving advice, giving wisdom and counsel from his many years in the Mat Wars. And without Suzuki doing the same, that's actually a major advantage to Yokai Butai here in this contest. Eight minutes and change remaining. Going back into Camel Clutch. But the ball, the back ball was already under the rope. And now, okay, that's just a blatant choke hold. The referee's going to have to say something about that. It's surprising how little Suzuki gun bullshit we've gotten from these guys so far. Irish whip back into the corner. Oh! Swing and a miss by the White Furred Fox. The Shirake Kitsune. Going to be trying to show us a Kitsune K. The fox style of professional wrestling. We saw Tanuki block this kick earlier. Can no, he cannot. That connected like a gunshot. The bad ring position. No, the referee's not going to call off the. Interesting. I thought the, the ears might have been under the rope there. But no harm, no foul. There's the beautiful spin kick. Be looking for QB Nejere, the nine tail twist, but a dead, a deadlift, deadlift German suplex into the hole. German suplex hold though. One, two, shoulder off the mat right before that final and fatal three count. And wait a minute, we got a, a submission situation here from the illegal fighters, and everybody's distracted by that. Let's check this out. Nine tail twist, QB Nejere, QB Nejere. Referee a little slow on the count because of the illegal man in the ring. One, 
two, three. QB Nejire picking up the victory for Yokai Butai. Here are your winners, Yokai Butai. Wait a minute. Okay, Ultra Mantis Black laying down the challenge. Bring whatever's left of Zaidan J to the finale, and it's gonna be, okay, we've got that now. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be accepted. Zaidan J versus Yokai Butai at the season finale next week. I'm looking forward to seeing that. That match will, of course, have to take place after Botsumania. Main event time and possibly Mr. Shota's final regular season match in the Animated Wrestling League. Here comes the champion. Unorthodox challengers abound in the AWL right now. The following contest is your main event of the evening, scheduled for one fall, and it is a two-on-three handicap match. Introducing first, they will suffer the handicap, making his way to the ring. From the land of the giants, he is the reigning and animated wrestling league intercontinental champion. Kobayashi. If Kyojin Kobayashi can survive the Cage of Death as Intercontinental Champion, he will have his fifth and final title defense. He will be the complete Intercontinental Champion and earn the right to challenge the Grand Champion, whomever that may be, at the time, place, and match of his choosing. And that would happen very early next season, I have no doubt. But he's got a huge obstacle between him and victory. And tonight is only part of that journey. And his partner, making his ring from Tokyo, Japan, the Prince of the Pinfall, Hifumi. old friend, an old co-worker of Kyojin Kobayashi. They've apparently become personal friends uh, since the breakup of Nippon Yokata, the nationalist faction back in the day. They have a professional respect for each other. Hikumi Ryuji admires the way that Kyojin Kobayashi has grown as a professional wrestler in his in-ring skill, which is what Hikumi Ryuji values. Now they are working as a tag team. We don't have a tag team name for them yet. If you have any ideas, comment below. Little and large, maybe. Ferrari and Tank. I don't know. Seriously, if you've got any tag team name ideas for these people, drop it in the comments. I'd love to read them. And they are the opponents introducing first with you there for free. Representing Zidon J. Mr. Shulta and Mr. Nobuyuki. This is a financial transaction, ladies and gentlemen. These men are not so much partners with Sakushi Tobu as they are uh, employees, leases, to the deathmatch veteran. Mr. Shota, mathematically, nothing he can do. A win will not keep him out of Botsumania. But we now know that if Mr. Shota survives Batsumania, he will join the rest of Zaidan J versus Yokai Utai at the finale. So he could actually get paid twice at the finale, which I'm sure he would love. Also, have, you know, he's still having a career. Making from the Deathmatch Circuit, he is the number one contender to the AWL Intercontinental Championship. Sabushi this low-down, dirty, cheating scoundrel has pulled all sorts of crap this season. And I don't know why, I mean, you would think he wouldn't get rewarded with a title match at a season finale for, for all of the backstage attacks, the sneak attacks, dirty tricks that he's pulled this season, and now, you know, buying a pair of cell swords. But, Kyojin Kobayashi wants to end his Sakushi Koku problem once and for all, and the only bait to do that 
is the Intercontinental title in the Cage of Death. But right now, Mr. Shota, in possibly his final match in regular season competition, he's up against a literal giant. Cross body block, low cross body. Is there any other kind for, for this guy? Yeah, there is. It's called sailing over your opponent's head. Ooh! Headbutt by the Intercontinental Champion. That's going to be a small fine. And now, what is this? An arm... You can try to arm... Yeah, he levers him up! Credit to the former Flying Yuki, Mr. Shota, with an incredible feat of leverage, getting the super heavyweight super giant, Kyojin Kobayashi, off of his feet with an arm drag. And now going for the strikes, trying to you know, wear his opponent down before he throws out a Pokeball, I guess. 14 minutes and change, right hand. Going up, going down. Good grief. Irish whip back into the corner. And this is where that two on one, sorry, that two on three disadvantage could come into play here. Is if they can start pulling off the trio's moves, if they can start pulling off more tag kogekis, keeping each other fresh. A suplex strike by the champion. Irish whip back into the corner. And a, admittedly, a bit of a cheap shot there. Bit of a cheap shot there by Hifmi Ryuji. Of course, they are dealing with the handicap. They're going to take every advantage they can. Oh, beautiful assistant power slam. Okay, these guys were never really a tag team back in the uh, Nippon Yokata days. Maybe that's just bad management by uh, Yamada Jiro. These guys actually have some real tag team chemistry. I'm liking this. Maybe they need to be in the tag division next season, you know, properly. I'm, taking a, I'm going to take a look here at the, uh, the win-loss records. Are they actually in the tag team division officially? Um, I'm not seeing them. I think it's actually... Yeah, I'm not seeing them. No, they are not a registered tag team. They need to fix that. Seriously, again, if you have ideas for a tag team name for Hifumi Ryuji, the Prince of the Pinfall, and the Giant, Kyojin Kobayashi, Drop them down. Drop them down in the comments. If it's a good one, I will give you credit, but I will, and I will use it. And boom! Mr. Nobuyuki now, your legal combatant alongside Hifumi Ryuji. So we have the high flyer versus the technical expert, the scientific wrestler, and we appear to have Satoshi Toba scratching his ass. <sighs> Lovely content, ladies and gentlemen. Attempted control, the referee looking to get some kind of semblance of order here. As Hifumi Ryuji going to be looking for a quick roll-up, possibly, just trying to get this over with. Irish whip into the corner. It's another tag, man. Let's see what else these guys can do together. From the red rope. An arm breaker by the Intercontinental Champion. Duck under the lariat. It's really easy to duck under a strike from coaching Kobayashi. And there's the tag, and the cell swords doing their job. Satoshi Tobu watching his opponent in the finale, getting softened up for him right here without having to do anything. He has not been legal in this match so far. Hasn't done anything. He's still going to get paid tonight, one way or the other, obviously. Another leverage arm drag. And again, that's impressive strength, even with the leverage event. Oh, Mongolian chop counter denied. Denied entry at the airport there to Mongolia. An elevated triangle. He's got him all the way up like a small child. Look at that. That is the size, the strength, the power of the giant, of the intercontinental champion. That is what Satoshi Tobu is going to have to deal with inside the cage of death. It will be two out of three knockouts. No, I'm not kidding. In that, walk, in that giant tetanus shot of a cage constructed and designed by Satoshi Tobu himself. Huge advantage to the challenger. Power bomb. Oh! Springing power bombs. Is that a slingshot power bomb, I guess? By using the ropes for a little extra bit of oomph and power in the power bomb. And now looking to crack the back. Back breaking labor by the Open office boy. Open Five minutes. Five minutes fast. Going up and drop. 
and a, a very simple maneuver, the backdrop. But, but from somebody like Kojin Kobayashi, that is, you know, that, that's a seven foot drop of your head down to the canvas. That is going to hurt. The champion looking for something, looking for the Dominator, looking for the victory here. Dominator! The Dominator into the cover. One, two, and a quick kick out after the two count. Not a particularly deep two there. Ooh! Challenger with the opportunity. Oh, not Challenger. The Challenger watching. Uh oh, this, this could be bad. The steel superstructure of the ring coming into play. DDT on the outside! Kyojin Kobayashi. Doesn't matter how big you are, you can still get a concussion. Kyojin Kobayashi in huge trouble here. Looks like the office boys of Zaidan J are going to be earned, the salary men earning their, their pay tonight. Oh, look at this. Grabs him by the head, pummels him to the mat, doesn't leave his feet. Going to try to shake it off, let the adrenaline help him through this. Goes for that triangle choke, doesn't get it. Doesn't get him off the ground. The psycho knee, I think. Or a claymore or something. I don't know what the hell that was supposed to be. Running something. German suplex, hold off! One! And that's a maneuver where it helps to be shorter than your opponent, because you can have a little more leverage if you've got your center of mass under theirs. And I think everybody has that advantage over Kojin Kobayashi. Right hand by uh, Mr. Nobuyuki. We've seen some dirty tactics already here by the Zaidan J participants. Again, Satoshi Tobu doing absolutely nothing here. I'm pretty sure that was the financial arrangement. The referee has begun the 20 count. 20 count on the outside, AWL rules. Right hand by Mr. Nobuyuki. Ooh! Low cross body yet again by the Intercontinental Champion in his either his warm-up match or his wear-down match, depending on how this go. Uh-oh. Don't want to be Nobuyuki right now. Mr. Nobuyuki, who just barely avoided Botsumania this year by, I think, one or two points. Yeah, Mr. Nobuyuki, 15 and 21 in his AWL career, ratio of minus six. That's a couple victories safe of being in the danger zone. He's going to have to string together some wins next season, I think. Hard shot. Oh, right into, his, right into the partner's boot there. That has got to be deliberate. Now into the ring. Not, not straight to the ring post, but I think into the turnbuckle. And I don't... 14 out of 20 here, risking a count out. Neither man wants that. So they both return to the 20 by 20 foot squared circle of the Animated Wrestling League. Boot going for the Dominator in the corner. That could be very dangerous. Fling your, body, fling your opponent's body that close to the ropes into the cover. One, two, and finally, Satoshi Tobu shows up for work. He from Yuji. Oh, Snapdragon! He'd have hold, held him for a bridge if he were the legal man, and that could do damage. We don't fully know the extent of old injuries that the deathmatch career of Satoshi Tobu has given him. That could have done damage. Miss with the mid-leg lariat. German! German! Again with the German suplex hold and everybody's getting crazy in the ring. The referee's got to regain some control here. Again, this is a one-fall match. This is not an elimination rule situation. We don't have time for that. We're over our, we're over our usual 30-minute window as it is. We'll, of course, stick with this match to its conclusion. And then I've got to do my Excalibur impression. That's going to be fun. Diving tag made. Swing and a miss by Hifumi Ryuji. Not usually a high fly. Well, there's the, that's what he does. One. Second maneuver of Satoshi Tobu in the entire contest. And it was once again breaking up a pinfall. And now the abdominal stretch, the abdominal claw. The Intercontinental Champions down on the outside. Into the cover. One. Two. Uh, oh, you see how you see that? Did you see that? Kyojin Kobayashi rolls in. Tatsushi Tobu heads for the hills. That is telling. Big chop by Mr. Shota. Again, the man who will risk his career in Botsmania 
Four men enter, three men leave, one man leaves with a pink slip. That'll be the first match of the season finale next week. I don't know what the hell that was supposed to be, but it didn't work. Vertical suplex. Mr. Shota, graduate of the AWL Dojo, very well versed in the fundamentals of professional wrestling. Dive, boom, blockbuster. Picking his opponent up, maybe go, oh, actually, I don't know what he's going for here, but he gets thrown back into the ropes. Hopefully the padding on the turnbuckle had been recently fluffed. Mofu Mofu, kick to the head. What do we have here? The tag is, no, no tag was, no tag was made. I'm sorry, I apologize. No tag was made there. It could be right here, though. Nope. The referee says no. As Mr. Shota trying to control he from Yuji, but Sakshitobu doesn't really care about that. Going right back to that abdominal claw. That's a dangerous submission move to begin with, but the fact that he powers his opponent down, moves the knee, powers down into a pin, that's technically a pin. You're pushing your shoulders to the mat, and that's it. Damage done to the champion, so mission accomplished, I think. But let's take a look at some of the action. Mr. Shota in some of his final professional wrestling, possibly, for the AWL. Big damage done there, huge damage done but not enough. New Yominers, Hiki Ryuji and Kyoji Kobayashi. Congratulations to the Intercontinental Champion and the Prince of the Pinfall, a victory tonight. These guys need to register themselves as a tag team for season 20 of the Animated Wrestling League. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to leave our live action in the world famous AWL arena. And like I said, I get to do my Excalibur impression and see if I can run down the card for the season finale. It's Batsumania, the four worst wrestlers in the AWL in action to save their careers. Yokai Butai will face off against whatever's left of Zaidan J after Batsumania. And the clear the board match for the Joshi Singles Championship. I'm pretty sure we're going to have a new champion at the end of that. I don't see a possibility. Cage of Death, two out of three knockouts for the Intercontinental Championship. And Joshi Tag Team Action, Worlds Collide. It's Chikara versus the AWL. Tiger on Tiger Violence for the second season finale in a row. The tag team titles on the line. Will the mantle be passed? And in the main event, it's going to be Project Tetsu defending the AWL Grand Championship against the complete Canadian National Champion, The Rock, in The Rock's chosen last man standing match. It's all to play for at AWL 380-20. We'll see you there. Konedan, Kimarida. Kimarida.